You'll notice a trend on various interconnected media channels on YouTube. It's a push from progressive pundits to encourage fellow progressives to vote third party while chastising third party movements, while focusing on vague grassroots community work, which ultimately is more about spreading an apathetic, apolitical-esque mood contagion rather than helping the disenfranchised. But why is this being pushed and who is behind it? I now give you the Kremlin progressives. Jimmy Dore is top dog of the Kremlin progressives. His YouTube channel alone has 1.3 million subscribers. But what is Jimmy's background and where did he come from? Well, Jimmy started out as a struggling academic and spent some time as a forklift driver and a bricklayer, according only to him. He has been an alcoholic all of his life. Even after he recently said he quit alcohol and weed on an episode of The Jimmy Dore Show, his lie was exposed when his drunkenness was on full display as he stumbled upon the set of a Do Dissidents live stream. During the middle of the podcast, Jimmy interrupts to speak utter nonsense, all while slurring his words loudly. Take a look have made the point, and it's a point I agree with, that now a lot of white people are getting a taste of how this stuff only sounded to them. Because they were never able, large sections of those communities were never able to connect that rhetoric to the life that they actually live. By the cop. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see him there. There's a reflection. <laughs> I heard it. It's so windy today. I didn't know if it was the trick. Um, that- Activists of, the, what, there's another window? I think he's locked down. I think he's coming in over there. Oh. Um, we, um... <laughs> Look, I've had it with you guys. The, fuck, the push pull of America's history cannot be denied. Are you, dri- you are driven by <laughs> grievance and grift. <laughs> Is that what's happening here? You're 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 sitting here being driven by grievance and grift, and I and I can. By the way, this is the Jimmy Dore mugs. They're available <laughs> right now at the Jimmy Dore merch store. Those They're are the fantastic. grievance and grift mugs. You are. This is the grievance and grift mug. Yeah. Become a part of the grievance and grift mug club. There you are, go. Are you are you are you coming on here and working your right wing grift? Are you working your right wing grift? On I'm our so show? sick of people being driven by grievance and grift and denying the push and pull of American <laughs> history. Our, oh, our, uh, our, our next segment, we're actually going to close out with a rousing chorus of God bless America. God, well, God bless America. Did you ever think you'd be hearing an American president? Try to have peaceful overtures with North Korea. Do you know what that does to defense stocks? I Do know. you believe it kills them? It kills them. It, kills them. it, it tears at the social fabric of the country. That's right. It's banning a- and, and banning books that show kids how to do uh, <laughs> oral copulation <laughs> on Mossad agents. This is grievance and grift. Push, pull, history. Don't deny it. Beautiful. You say it nicer than I do. What a cameo. What a cameo. I thought we were just getting the Alfred Hitchcock background actor cameo, so we got... Now, I'm not all about personal attacks, but I did want to bring this up to illustrate that Jimmy Dore is always hiding something. After achieving his marketing communications degree from Columbia College in Chicago, He focused exclusively on stand-up comedy, an occupation of formulaic verbal parlor tricks to get drunks to laugh. Whether you quote-unquote kill or bomb simply depends on if the room is mostly a crowd of angry drunks or happy drunks, Jimmy clearly being of the former of the two categories. After middling stand-up success, he got a gig on TYT's Aggressive Progressives, where he continually had angry outbursts, mostly against Republican politicians. But nearing the 2016 presidential election, Jimmy changed gears saying he wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton and didn't care if Trump won. Shortly after, he left TYT and focused on his own program, The Jimmy Dore Show. 
He slowly became more alienated from the mainstream left when he started to spend 85% of his time lambasting Democrats as opposed to Republicans. While the show has been going on, he has had guest spots on RT, the primary Russian media outlet, filling in for hosts like Jesse Ventura and doing many interviews as a regular correspondent. RT, mind you, is Kremlin-funded and is overseen by the Russian government to make sure the content espoused either talks positively of Putin and his allies or negatively of his adversaries. Jimmy has no problem following these two tenants on his own program. You'll notice he'll be the first to condemn the U.S. or any U.S. allied country who attacks another sovereign country, except in the case of Russia. He has not once condemned Putin for invading Ukraine. In fact, he makes excuses for it. You'll notice with the other Kremlin progressives, who I will talk about more in depth fairly soon, they do the same exact thing. So what is Putin's endgame? And why does he need a group of American propagandists to do his bidding? Well, Putin has a cozy relationship with Trump. Even Trump admits that. In fact, many speculate that if Trump gets reelected, he will give over the Donbass region to Russia and bar Ukraine from entering NATO through a peace treaty, all of which bodes favorably well for autocrat Putin. And wouldn't you guess it? Jimmy and his minions focus mostly on justifying or excusing the Russian invasion of Ukraine and place blame squarely on the U.S. and NATO. They never speak negatively of Putin and vehemently deny that Putin's military is targeting Ukrainian civilians, all the while encouraging progressive voter apathetic sentiments. One of Jimmy's go-to guests is Max Blumenthal, founder of The Gray Zone, an outlet long suspected of receiving Kremlin funding. He does this so Max can parrot RT talking points. Blumenthal has long been a regular RT and Sputnik contributor, and on one of his many JDS visits, Max even attacked Alexis Navalny. He referred to the main opposition leader as a racist and a liar, on par with current RT narratives at that time. He did this while conveniently failing to mention that the Russian government under Putin has poisoned and imprisoned Navalny simply for being a presidential candidate. Jimmy has also had on Aaron Maté, another Grey Zone contributor who has filled in for weeks as a guest host. In tandem, Dor and Aaron have justified Putin's efforts to keep Russian ally and brutal Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad in power. Another one of Jimmy's frequent guests is Scott Ritter, an RT columnist and convicted child predator. Scott spoke alongside Jimmy at the Rage Against the War Machine rally in D.C. This was a poorly attended Kremlin-funded quote-unquote anti-war protest regarding the Russian invasion of Ukraine where demonstrators could be seen waving Russian flags. And going by this 2013 tweet, it's hard for me to believe that Scott is even trying to be an anti-war anything. Another favorite of Jimmy's is Jackson Hinkle, who was also at the Kremlin-funded quote-unquote anti-war event. Hinkle, simply put, is a door sycophant and pro-Putin American YouTuber. He even hawked Russian military Z-shirts at the beginning of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. This Russia glorification trend even goes all the way back when Graham Elwood was co-host. During his stint on the Jimmy Dore show, Graham, on his own YouTube channel, did a series where he traveled throughout Russia to point out how great it was and how it, in no way, fit the Western media's depiction of it. It was a white propaganda campaign, to say the least. It was the enemy, almost Stalin, the KGB, and mean people that don't like freedom. So I had to see for myself what Russia was really like. So I ventured out.
So is the star of the Kremlin progressives, Jimmy Dore, is he anti-war? No, he's just pro-money. When comedy wasn't working out well, he moved to DYT. When he felt like a sideline third-string quarterback, he got a bump from RT and now abets their government. Now, with the Jimmy Dore show, he is able to buy things like multi-million dollar houses in LA while simultaneously doing PR for his own comedy career, which is starting to make a substantial comeback. Plus, he most recently started getting additional kickbacks from hawking air filters, health supplements, bamboo bed sheets, and, I'm not joking, silver investments. Help you put it into uh, something that's not associated with Wall Street, that uh, it's not associated with a dollar that has the value uh, 2.5 cents in 1971. It's, it's a precious metal. He's pushing a message of anti-politics in order to encourage progressives to hold hostile attitudes towards their country and government in hopes of having them be totally disengaged from it. He wants them to be so apathetic and so pessimistic that they'll only be able to find solace in his drunken rants. By decimating the progressive voting bloc, Trump, the autocrat wannabe, and Putin toady is more likely to get reelected and gain substantial permanent control of the government. This is exactly what Putin wants. It's a win-win for Putin and Jimmy. In conclusion, this is just what a capitalist system does to people. People will struggle and eventually do anything they have to in order to survive. So when you are tuned into any form of media, don't be idealistic or hopeful. You are in the belly of the beast and shouldn't get wrapped up in the digestion process. But before I sign off, in case you needed any more evidence, I leave you with a picture of Jimmy Dore giving a speech at a UN Security Council meeting at the behest of the Russian government in order to validate their invasion of Ukraine. Enjoy. For Truthbuster Inc., this has been a payday.